All right, are you ready back there? We're good to go? All right. Let's go ahead and open up with prayer tonight. And I believe this this sermon tonight will be a help to many. I had uh, I had the Lord show me, it just so happened it was a dream, but the Lord showed me that as I was preaching, that there was somebody in the dream that I really would have thought would have understood faith, but they seemed really confused as I was preaching and like they didn't really understand what I was saying. I was preaching on faith, but I kept preaching anyway and kept preaching and kept preaching. And the more that I preached, the more I could tell that they were really understanding it. And when I came out of the dream, I just felt the Lord saying to me that I needed to start a series on faith because there's a lot of people that may, maybe thought they understood it, but they don't. And I think that this series will really help. But let's, let's pray. So, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for an open heaven here, your presence. Holy Spirit, as you come to anoint and empower this time. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving upon this word that even now those that are going to be uh, watching or listening to this live or through a recording, I thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving upon every one of us to help us have good soil of hearts and minds and lives, like the parable of the seed and the sower, that we are good soil. I thank you, Lord, for speaking through me your words of life as living seeds of truth. And that it'll be sown into that good soil, watered by the Holy Spirit, taking root and grow and produce a hundredfold harvest of eternal fruit that remains till Jesus comes. Lord, I thank you for speaking through me everything that needs to be said. And the winds of the Holy Spirit will blow and carry this out everywhere it's supposed to go. It will get where it's supposed to accomplish what it's supposed to because the Bible says that the word of the Lord will not return void but will go forth and accomplish that which the Lord sent it to. And so, Lord, we stand on that promise, and we also believe tonight that the Bible says the birds of the air try to steal the seed, right? So, Lord, we agree as a church, and anything of the enemy that would try to hinder this word from getting where it's supposed to go or accomplish what's supposed to, we speak now that it be bound in Jesus' name and will back off. And, Lord, I thank you for everything accomplished in and through this time that your will to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so... One of the books I'm going to be using as I go through this series, is, and this was when Jim was with us, he recommended that everyone get that book by T.L. Osborne. It's a classic book called Healing the Sick, and you can get it on places like Amazon or anywhere books are sold, but he recommended that book and that it would be something that you go through, and I would encourage people to read through it. He, he read a chapter a day and has been doing that for years and it really has strengthened his faith and sustained that. But I would just recommend that you read a little bit every day until you go through it and then maybe keep going through it until you feel that it's gotten down into your spirit. So the, that's just a recommendation. Now the scripture, I'm just going to give this, this portion of scripture and it's out of Hebrew, uh, Romans 10, 17. And it says that faith comes by hearing. Okay, I want you to focus on that because a lot of times we, we can read and we can reason things and we think that we know something and we've heard it a little bit before, but listen, as I preach this series, I believe that it's going to help us get faith. Okay, like never before. And I know this, I know that doctrinally all of us are given a measure of faith and I know that it only takes a little bit of faith to move mountains. I know that. But I think a lot of times there's a lot of confusion about faith because if I was asked somebody, what is faith? A lot of times people will quote, quote Hebrews 11.1 1, and they'll say, well, faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Well, that's true, but what does that mean? And that's when their, their eyes gloss over, the blood drains from their face, right? And they really don't know what that actually means. And so we're going to look at this tonight together. And let me say up front that faith is not an emotion because you can feel like you have great faith one day and you really don't. And then other days you can feel like you don't have great faith, but you do. How confusing was that? But faith, the point is, is that faith is not an emotion because your emotions can be up and down and all over the place. And faith is also not mentally agreeing with something. You can hear something, go, okay, I, I agree with that, but that doesn't mean that you have faith for it. You're just agreeing with something that's said. 
So please get this, that what I'm describing in the mind and the emotion realm is, is soulish. Faith is deeper than your soul. It's down in your spirit. And faith is something spiritual. It is a spiritual substance within you, deep down in there. And God has given all of us a measure of faith, but I believe with all my heart that your faith can grow, your faith can increase as you continue to meditate on the word. And so the word of God is what gives us faith because we start learning what the will of God is and we start learning what the scriptures say about certain things. But faith is something that we desperately must understand because how many knows that everything in our Christian walk is going to eventually somehow be contingent on the fact that we can believe God for it. And so this is a really important uh, subject I'm preaching on. And so I go, I come into this subject matter with a little bit of a heavy heart. And let me just say this too, that if, if throughout this series, if somehow there's a little bit of conviction or something in this that maybe the Holy Spirit's dealing with you, just remember, I always have people say, I love Pastor Scott, right? Okay, so don't get mad at me. But Mark 141, Jesus answered the question, when the leper came to him and said, you know, Lord, if it be your will to heal me. And Jesus said, oh, it's my will. And let me just give you some things to think about tonight. God could have placed in the scripture that Jesus died on the cross just for sin alone. And that was it. There was nothing else. And that's where most of Christianity probably believes, actually. But the fact that Jesus paid for at the cross for us to be delivered from the enemy. He hung on the tree, Galatians 3.13, becoming a curse. Blood dripped from his mangled body. His blood was payment for us to be delivered from the enemy. So therefore, we can have faith that it is the will of God for you to be completely free from the enemy. Nobody should argue that point. And also, Jesus paid for our healing. He went to the whipping post. His back was plowed open. Isaiah was clear that by his stripes we were healed. Jesus hung on the cross. The back side of the cross was for our healing. And so Jesus paid for it. Now, that alone should answer the question, is it the will of God? Because Jesus died for everything that was the will of God. So the question is settled for me at the cross. So I never come to the Lord with the question, if it be your will to heal me or if it be your will to set me free, I understand that Jesus wouldn't have died for it in the first place if it wasn't his will. So we need to get this settled within us that God is a good God and he wants us to be healed. He wants us to be delivered. He doesn't just want our sins forgiven, but he wants us delivered from the enemy. He wants us healed. He wants us living in victory. But these things have to be, be laid hold of by faith. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about faith in a moment. And John 6, 38 says, For I came down, Jesus said, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. So everywhere Jesus went, what was he doing? Was he going up to people and saying, eeny, meeny, miny, mo? Okay, it's, it's the will of God, you're healed, but it's not God's will that you're healed. Did Jesus ever do that? Everywhere Jesus went, he healed everybody that came to him for healing. He delivered everybody that came to him to be delivered. There was never anybody turned away. Even, even the woman, the Syrophoenician woman that came that was a Canaanite, and she said, my daughter is plagued by demons. And Jesus said, well, it's not really right for me uh, to give you what it belongs to Israel because she, was, she wasn't a part of the covenant. You understand? And she said, but, she said, even the dogs eat crumbs from the master's table. And she humbled herself and Jesus said, woman, you have great faith. It's going to be done. He didn't even turn her away. So can anybody give me once in scripture that somebody came to Jesus when he walked the earth and said, Lord, please heal me. Please deliver me. And Jesus said, it's not my will. Go, go back where you came from sick. Go back where you came from demonized. Was there one time in anywhere in the Bible Jesus did that? Not once. So we can conclude that Jesus said, as you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And he said, I've come to do the will of him who has sent me. And so Jesus, when he walked the earth, it was his good will, his pleasure to heal people and deliver people. Now, the problem that sometimes he ran into was just simply faith. 
It was really an interesting portion of scripture and some people get really upset at this scripture for some reason. But it says in one place that Jesus was hindered because of their lack of faith. Do you remember that? And he was only able there to respond to their faith level. And he said that because of their faith, it was only uh, able to heal a few sick people. I wonder what Jesus could have done there if people would have really believed and expected something. You know, when I come to church, there, there's an anticipation for God to come here and move. And I know you probably feel that too. But I pray through the week. And one of the things I want to help people understand about faith is this. That faith is something that you have to receive first before you see the answer in the natural. That's where the rubber meets the road and everybody gets kind of confused. When, for example, when Jim and Sandy were here and they prayed for people, people were healed then, past tense. But not everybody necessarily saw everything change immediately. Some people did. And if people would have believed it's done now, it's done, I am healed. And they would have went out thanking and praising God for their healing and stayed in that. I believe that things would be changing. And I think about different stories with that I could give you. Because sometimes things happen over a period of time, but we have to be in faith. Now, one story was that Derek Prince one time uh, prayed for, that she became his wife, okay, but when he met her, she had a, a horrible back problem or something. I can't really remember the details, but I remember the story. He prayed for her to be healed, but he told her, now keep the plug in the wall. And what he meant, and she understood, was like if you take an electric outlet and you plug something into it, there's a current flowing into the cord. But if you unplug it, then you lose the current. And he said, we've prayed and we believe together, but you've got to stay in faith that it's done and she did she she stayed in a lot of pain and she struggled for a while and I, if I remember that I may not have the time frame perfect but I think it was about six months later but it was a while later it wasn't the next day and it wasn't the next week and it wasn't the next month it was a while later that she was completely it just her body lined up with the word it just changed she was completely physically healed. But really, let me say this, really she was healed when they prayed. It's just that it, her body changed later. Does that make sense? Oh, this is the, the, the where faith can elude some people because they think that they're in faith. But when they come up and get prayer, what they're, what they're doing is, is they're hoping that something might happen. There's a big difference between that and expecting it and then receiving it by faith and going out in faith it's done they're two different things and i'll give another story i get there's several i could give about times i've prayed with people but there was, there was a young lady one time that come to me and she got prayer and i prayed for her to be baptized in the holy spirit now sometimes people speak in tongues right then but in this case i told her i said now listen because she had a lot of a lot of stuff in her life where she kind of had to get through spiritually. Let's just leave it at that. But I said, now listen. Her name happened to be Crystal. I said, Crystal, listen. You receive it by faith. We prayed. You're baptized in the Holy Spirit. It's done. It's settled. Tongues and all that will come. Don't worry about that. It's done. So she left out. And she told me this story. This was a couple weeks later. She said that she happened to be of all places on an airplane flying home. This happened. She told me this, and she was probably, I think she was probably 17 years old. And she was flying back to see her family, and on the airplane, she said that she put on some worship, and she put on these little headphones, and back then, this was years ago, I mean, remember the old headphones that had a little uh, foam, you know? And so she's in there, and she's just kind of sitting back in her chair, which, let's make fun of the airlines for a moment. You recline, and it's what, like, like that much right so she just kind of she reclines that much and so now she's relaxing right and so she's sitting there just kind of to herself worshiping and she said all of a sudden 
she began to kind of cry and a tear was rolling down her cheek and she started like these tongues just started coming up out of her spirit and she started praying in the spirit quietly to herself on an airplane. She went in a church service. But when was she baptized in the Holy Spirit? When we prayed. It just simply manifested in her life a couple weeks later. And if I remember about it, it was two weeks. So there's another story I'll give that this is a, a Kenneth Hagin story. Kenneth Hagin Sr. was really a great man of faith and he has some hilarious stories but he he really inspired me in faith personally all right so he said that he, one day he woke up and i guess the only thing that i can figure was it was some kind of a stroke or something but one side of his face just drooped and wouldn't work and so he's looking in the mirror and he's just poking his his face like this he's what happened you know and if you read the story, it's really, some of it's funny. But he said that he knew the word of God enough to know that if he went to this church and he just had an elder anoint him with oil and pray for him, he would be healed because the Bible said so. Not because the elder necessarily, you know, whatever, but just faith. The Bible says the prayer of faith. And so <clears throat> he goes to this church and it was like a Wednesday type of meeting and, and he asked for an elder and so somebody came. And he said, now listen, he's basically, see my face? Now listen, the Bible says if you'll anoint me with oil and we pray that God will do it. And the guy said, well, okay, if, if you believe. And so he anoints him with oil and they pray. And he walks out there and says, I believe I received my healing. It's done. And he walks out and his face looks exactly like he did. On the, so on the way home, how many knows that you, you really need friends that are going to cut the ceiling open and get you to Jesus, not friends like Kenneth Hagin had this day, okay? So on the way home, he's, he's believing God, I'm healed, right? And his, one of his friends was like looking at his face side, like this, like looking at him and poking his face. And he's, going, he's going, man, I don't think you're healed. He said, it looks the same. And he goes, leave me alone, I'm healed. And they were arguing with him all the way home. You don't need those type of people around you. Why do you think Jesus threw people out when he was going to pray for the sick? That he'd be, he, would, he would go in there to raise the dead, and he'd be like, everybody leave the room except for Peter and John. And then he would have them in there. Why? Because he knew that there'd be a bunch of people going, they're still dead. It didn't happen, you know. So Kenneth had to go against the fact that people were poking his face and telling him he was still not healed, right? But he said, I know I'm healed. And so he said, Lord, I, he just kept thanking the Lord. Lord, I thank you that I am healed. The word says so. After a few days, he woke up and his face was normal. And it was normal the rest of his life. I mean, even when he was uh, quite old and passed away, he never had a, a droop on his face whatsoever. You know, he, he was a tremendous man of faith. And really, he wouldn't have had uh, the ministry he had. He wouldn't have even lived if he didn't understand faith because if you read his testimony I encourage you to do so if you're not familiar with it he actually died twice saw hell and he got the revelation out of Mark chapter 11 or, or Matthew 11 I think it was Mark where it says that believe you have received it anyway God healed him completely from a heart condition and uh, you know for a year he had to walk in faith in that and you know as a very young man he should have died he had an incurable heart disease, but he believed, I am healed. And for like a year, his body had to change. And that man lived to be quite old and passed away, I believe, in 2003. I don't know how old he was, but I think he was in his 80s. And so he had a long, healthy life because of faith. All right. And then uh, what Jim, remember that story he told about that lady that had the cancer on her face? And she would get up and testify at church, I'm healed. And what were people doing? Looking at her face and... I don't think you're healed, but it fell off after a year. Listen, if you believe God, there's, there's a point of contact. And we had that conference and people got prayer. I believe things changed. I really do. He felt that he took authority and felt that every generational curse was broke. And it was. That's the end of it. So anybody was dealing with something, that was the end of it then. It happened then. And you're going to see the outworking of it. And I believe that there were, there were barriers in the spiritually that were broken in that conference. And I'm not going back. I'm not going back to something. We've got to break through that conference. And I believe that if people will stay in faith, that you're going to see over, the, over this year and maybe the next year, you're going to see a lot of testimonies, I'm telling you. So 
faith is like a spiritual substance. So if you go to the bank and people, let's say that you had an inheritance in the bank, it's there, but you have to go get it to use it. All right, so this is the way faith works. Let's say that you're believing for something, and let's just say financial, and your hand is empty because you don't have the finances that you really need, okay? And so you pray, and there's nothing in your hand yet, right? So when you pray and you believe what the Bible says, and you know you believe that God has met your needs, and you start thanking him and praising him for meeting your needs, you may not have the finances in your hand yet, but what you do have is the substance of faith in your hand. And so faith is like a check. You have it, but you really don't have the money yet, to, you see. And so it's something that's in place of. So you have this spiritual substance in your hand of faith. And that faith is there until it is replaced with the finances that you need. But you need to keep your faith there. And the way you do that is, is after you have sincerely prayed about it and God has heard you, the Bible says you pray according to will of the Lord. He hears you. If you know he hears you, that's the key. If you know he hears you, you have what you ask. So you get that spiritual substance of faith in your hand and you don't let go of it. You, you stay in faith and you start praising, Lord, I thank you that you're supplying my needs according to your riches and glory. I may not see it yet, but I thank you, Lord, it's happening, it's moving. And sometimes you might need to add this, and if the enemy's trying to hinder it, I bind you, you will get out of my finances in Jesus' name. Get out. But I thank you, Lord, that you're meeting my needs. I thank you that your angel's on assignment, your Holy Spirit's moving, this is moving forward. And if you'll stay in faith, eventually that substance will be replaced with what you actually need and what you're believing for. And believe me, my wife and I have had times where we really had to believe, some of it's personal, so I can't share it like publicly, but we had to believe God for things that, that it, was, it was very much an impossible thing in the natural. And it looks so unlikely but we stayed in faith about it because God spoke to us about it. And we kept thanking him. And sometimes years rolled by. Everybody say years. Years rolled by and then eventually it would happen just like God said it would. Many times people get out of faith. I know there was a lady one time that she, she started getting, pursuing, I guess, a relationship with the Lord. And she was asking me some questions and I was answering the questions and she, she started praying, and she started praying for her husband. But after a sh very short amount of time, she gave up on it and just went her own way. And, I, and I, it was sad because I got to thinking, you know, if she would have just stayed with the Lord, everything could have been different. And now her life is not doing well at all. So faith is not a feeling. And let me say this too. I want, this is the part that might convict a little bit, but this is for all of us. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now think about this for a moment. What people are talking about is really connected to what's in their heart. So for example, let me just say something, uh, maybe a different example than where I'm going, but if somebody's heart is full of bitterness, you know what you're going to hear them talking about? The people that's hurt them, the people that's wronged them, how rotten they are, and blah, 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 just on and on, right? Because their heart's full of bitterness. If their heart is on fire for God, they come in, they, they get their lives right with Jesus, God really starts doing something in their life, you start talking to them. It's not long before you start hearing about, you know what Jesus did for me, you know what's going on in my life, and, or what God showed me in the Word. And, and I was praying the other day and this happened, because why? That's what's in their heart. If they have a burden for souls, when you're talking to them, or a hunger for revival, it's not going to be too long until that comes up. So what I'm saying is this. I, I want people to really think about this in 2024. What's in our hearts is going to come out of our mouths. So when people are going through things, let's just say health, for example, is all the conversation about medical or is all the conversation about faith in what the Lord is doing? 
because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if somebody's always talking about the medical, then they're not really full of faith in their heart. They're actually probably got a lot of fear and uncertainty, and they're looking for their answer that way. Does that make sense? And so think about that this year. Let the Lord deal with you. What is coming out of my mouth is actually what's in my heart. And faith is a heart issue. It's something that is, is deep down in the heart. And so if you're really going to have true faith, it's not going to be mental agreement. It's not going to be emotional. It's going to be something in that heart area that produces true faith. That's why the Bible says over and over, it things like this, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth unto salvation. It's a heart faith. That's why Jesus said when you pray, believe you have received it, if you don't doubt where in your heart, you'll have what you say. And you can speak to the mountain, be moved, and it'll be moved. How many have had mountains before you? I mean, you've been going along in your Christian walk, and there's things that are like a giant or like a mountain or something that is really an obstacle. And, and you have to believe God to remove something in, that's in front of you but you've got to believe it in your heart and begin to speak it out of your mouth. And one of the things Kenneth Hagin used to say that always stayed with me in that particular portion of scripture, it says to believe in your heart once, but it says you'll have what you say if you believe what you say. The word say is in there twice. And he said that you got to believe in your heart, but you're going to have to do twice as much confession about it as you do believing. And that's true. Your mouth has a lot to do with things. If people are speaking doubt, fear, unbelief, negativity, that's going to be what they have. But if people are speaking faith and they're positive and they're uplifting, that's going to be what they have. So let me move on. So faith is not hope. So anytime you're praying about something, don't go in there or don't come up here with a mindset of, Boy, I hope that something happens. I hope that God hears me. You've got to get beyond that. We've got to get to a place of understanding. I'm simply a child of God. So let me just give you maybe a statement or a paragraph here to make this point. When I go before the Lord, here's my attitude. Okay, I don't deserve anything. It's not about me. It's not about my righteousness. If, it was, if that was the case, I would be in a, a lot of trouble. I don't come to the Father in my own righteousness. I don't come in my own name. But how I do come is I am a son of blood covenant. That I am Christ's property. I belong to God. My sins are forgiven. I am made the righteousness of God in Christ. Therefore, when I come, I can come with confidence. And I know that God's going to listen to me because the Bible says he'll listen to me. And so I come with a boldness and a confidence before God that I'm praying and asking the will of God, therefore I know that he's listening to me and I know I'm going to have what I ask. We've got to get to a place where there's humility. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about what he's done for us. So that leads me into 1 John 5, 14. This is the confidence. Everybody say confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. So if we know that he hears whatever we ask, we know that we have whatever we've asked him for. So there's this confidence that we're praying the will of God. So if you're praying about a health issue, if you're praying to be set free from something, if you're praying about your needs being met, or you're praying that you're able to be useful for Christ's kingdom, if you're praying the will of God, then you're going to have what you're asking. You just got to believe that. And so another way that maybe I can make the example is faith is now. It's not something that you're thinking, well, I'll keep hoping that if I keep praying that one day he might do what I ask. That's the type of praying that, that will put that carrot in front of you and you'll be chasing that carrot that's out of reach for years to come. You can't pray like that. So let me give an example. Over this last week, I prayed about this service, I prayed about the sermon, and I quit praying about it. There's no point in keep praying about something that's already done. 
So when I come in today, I don't spend a lot of time praying over the service because I've already prayed about it. I come in and I'm thanking the Lord. I thank you for hearing and answering the prayers over the service tonight. Everything that you will is going to be done, and that's the end of it. And so I come in faith. And if I ever feel a resistance under my breath, I'll just, you know, during the worship, I bind the enemy, command him, get out of the way. But Lord, I thank you that everything's going to be accomplished, that your will to be done. So faith is that when I prayed about it this last week, I believed it was done then. I didn't wait until I got here and worried about it and thought, boy, I hope something happens. And, and if, I, if it feels good, then it might be a good service. If it don't feel good, man, it's not going to be. I don't live like that. that. That's all over the place. That's based on feelings and fear and doubt. And the enemy can manipulate that. The enemy can try to make you, you know, I've come into some services before where there was such a resistance against me and what I was preaching that I didn't really feel very good about anything. I, I was facing the warfare against me. Something was wanting me to shut my mouth. But I ignored all that and I kept saying, Lord, I thank you that everything's going to be accomplished, that your will to be done. Whether it feels good or not, don't make a bit of difference. And I'll tell you something about feelings. It's kind of a, it would be more of a funny story if I wasn't going through so much. But I remember a time, and it's actually 2011, I was, I had gone through a horrible betrayal. I was, I was really not doing good. My attitude was not a good attitude. I really was thinking of just getting out of the ministry, and I was thinking this way. I wouldn't wish this on a snake. I'm out of this thing. I'm out of here. I just, I had a really bad attitude. But that night, I still had to get up and preach, and um, I'm walking through there, and I'm praying for people, and lo and behold, even though I don't feel good at all, I've been through a horrible time in life, people are still getting hit by the power of God and getting touched. In fact, right in the middle of that was the, was the night that Brianna got hit by the power, I mean, out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting this. I was praying for people. <laughs> think, about, think about this for a minute, how much God's grace and mercy is. I'm thinking to myself, I wouldn't wish this on a snake. I'm ready to get out of this thing. But my hand's like this, walking through praying for people, and they're getting slammed by the power of God. That's how awesome God is because God's like, well, I know you're going through a difficult time, but I'm still going to touch people anyway. I don't need you. You're just there, okay? And so that, that's God's grace and mercy, isn't it? Because I was, my attitude wasn't a good one. And so I was going through praying for people. When I get to Brianna, it was like an explosion. She went flying back in the air, and when her back hit the ground, this intercession started exploding from her. That was the night that intercessory prayer ministry was born. Think about what I'm saying. She's been used so powerfully as an intercessor in this church all these years. It was birthed on the night that I was going through all of this thinking about leaving the ministry. So how many knows that my feelings, my mindset, all of that had nothing to do with anything. Deep down in my spirit, I still knew that regardless of what I'm going through, God's still going to be touching people because he loves people. Does that make sense? I'm just sharing that story to say you may feel horrible and God still move. He just wants us to be yielded vessels. And I've seen some great things through the years where, where people got touched so powerfully. And I remember this one girl, you know, you got to get past a lot of times the strongholds in people. She was Baptist. And I was praying for people, and people were getting baptized Holy Spirit speaking in tongues. And I love ministering to, to younger people because they're, they're just easier to minister to a lot of times. They have faith, and they're, they're not so religious. And so I get to her, though, and she's Baptist. So she was taught against tongues. So I get to pray for her, and she's like, oh, hold on now. And she said, I don't know about all this. And I said, that's fine. I said, you know, how about you just pray this? Her name was Jamie. I said, how about you just pray? Jesus, if this is really you, I want it. But if it's not, I don't. And I said, I don't even have to lay hands on you. I'm just going to stand here like this, and you can pray it. And she said, all right, Jesus, if this is really you, she, she goes back and starts speaking in tongues. <laughs> she hit the floor. <laughs> it was funny. 
And there was another time that this, this girl, uh, it happened to be that, that same girl, Crystal, but this was earlier in the story, and she was a mess. But anyway, I was going through praying for people, and I noticed that, you know, you're focused on what you're doing. And I tried to pray for all these young people a certain way because they come from so many different backgrounds. I mean, you had people that were in gangs, people that were in witchcraft, people that were, uh, you know, sex traffic, all these different things, all different ethnic backgrounds, all types of different religious backgrounds and so when i'd pray for them a lot of times i'd just like stand to their side and just kind of do like this because i didn't want them to think i was pushing them down because that's annoying to me when people say that so i was praying for them in a way that there's no way that they could say that i mean you're like this and down they go right and she's avoiding me i, I didn't realize it at first but i noticed because i kept seeing something shimmy off the distance you know and it was like if i was on this corner of the room she would go to the other corner and that'd be over here and she'd come down here so anyway finally for whatever reason she decided she was going to get prayer which i didn't care whether you know, it's up to her if she got it or whatever and she just simply said well i'm not going to fall down and i said well i don't care if you fall down or not and so i was just simply praying for her she fell down hard and she was out for a long time as a matter of fact after everybody else was leaving they had to pick her up like a sack of potatoes and carry her back wherever she was going so God will bypass a lot of those things, won't he? Because of faith. And I know that as I've ministered, I've had to go in faith many times that, Lord, I know you're going to move. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if I go up to somebody that's Baptist and says, I don't believe in this. God can still touch him. It doesn't matter if somebody says, I don't want to fall down. God can still touch him. You see what I'm saying? It all boils down to simple faith in the Lord who's bigger than all of that. So many times you receive something in prayer by faith, but time will pass before you actually see it. Which, of course, leads us to Mark eleven twenty two. Jesus answered them after the fig tree withered, Have faith in God, for truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain be removed and thrown into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, he will have what he says. Notice he'll have what he says. Not just what he believes in his heart, but it needs to be said. There's something about that. Therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask in prayer, believing that you will receive them, you will have them. And when you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your Father in heaven may also forgive your sins. Jesus was dealing with blockages right there. He was saying that when you pray, make sure that you don't have any blockages to answer prayer in your life. Because for example, if you have unforgiveness and you pray, you may not get what you're praying for until you are willing to forgive. Does that make sense? He says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father in heaven forgive your sins. So I'm going to close with this, these last couple things. So let me tell one more story, and I'm going to read this, calling things that are not as though they were. There was a really interesting story. How many know David Hogan's ministry? I, some do, some don't. But he was a missionary, I think he still is, out in the jungles of Mexico. So it was primarily to the native Indians that live out in the jungles. So these are the descendants of those that were like Incan, Mayan, and Aztec and all that. And they speak a different, they speak Indian. They don't speak uh, Spanish. And so he, he was out there ministering to them and he faced some really intense spiritual warfare through the years. As a matter of fact, he's had to deal multiple times with witch doctors and things like that. Well, they had had, after years of ministry, they had had like a gathering of leaders, and this was a big annual thing where all the leaders were going to come together, and, and they were going to have a fellowship and a powerful revival meeting and all that. And he was driving his pickup truck to go to the meeting, and he was telling this story that in his pickup truck, he said that he was driving, and he hit this wall of God's presence that shocked him. How many have ever had a suddenly where it comes out of nowhere? And he hit this presence of God and he stopped. For whatever reason, he put his truck in reverse and backed out of it. <laughs> and he said it was, it left him. And he, he, he drove back into it. He backed out again. He thought, what am I dealing with? And so he drove back into the glory and was heading to the meeting. And he could see that it was like, like a dome of God's presence that was over that whole meeting. I mean, it was strong. And he got to the meeting and the Lord's presence was just there so intense and 
And there was a lot of cool things that happened at these meetings. I know for one example was that they had prayed, and I don't remember there was a couple meetings like this, but they had prayed over the food because there just wasn't enough. I mean, they had totally underestimated the amount of people that were going to be there. And they had come from great distances, and so they needed the food that was there to meet the need. You understand? They're out kind of in the middle of nowhere. There wasn't like, let's all go to Whataburger. So they had prayed over the food, and he said that they just kept serving, kept serving, kept serving, and the tortillas never ran out. I mean, they just kept multiplying. He, and he said that they had this huge copper pot of beans. And he said, first off, it should have run out. And the second problem was that it should have caused everybody to start getting a need for a tetanus shot, right? But he said that it just kept multiplying and kept multiplying. He said after days of them dipping all these beans out of the pot, they had the same amount of beans in the pot. Isn't that something? All right, so in that context, they're in this meeting, and the Lord, the presence of God was so strong, and his son was there, and Jesus had a, he had a vision of Jesus in there, okay? Not that everybody saw Jesus, but his son saw Jesus. And Jesus was standing there, and he turned, and he was acting like he was going to leave. And his son reached out and said, no, please don't go. And Jesus said, there's not faith in here like there needs to be. Isn't that something? Remember that. He said, there's not faith. And he turned to go, and his son reached out again and said, but I believe. And then the power of God fell hard after that. I never forgot that story because people take out of the equation of revival faith. We need faith. When God shows up, he's wanting us to believe him for souls. He's wanting us to believe him for healings. You know, and it takes faith to do that. And how does faith work? Faith is that we believe that we receive it but we begin to speak out of our mouth as though it's done or as though it is happening. We're not speaking doubt, we're speaking faith. And therefore, Romans 4.16, therefore the promise comes through faith so that it might be by grace that the promise would be certain to all the descendants, not only to those who are of the law, which were the Jews, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, which is the Gentiles, who is the father of us all, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Talking about Abraham, obviously. Before God, whom he believed, and who raises the dead, and calls those things that do not exist as though they did. Against all hope, he believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken. Abraham was a great man of faith, wasn't he? But the Bible says, calling those things that are not as though they are. That's why it's so important that we stay in faith. There's different things that I had to believe God for. Without getting into any specifics, I remember there was a two-year period where God had spoken to me something that I knew was supposed to happen, and I figured it would happen a lot quicker than two years. And I told her about it, but I would speak it out regularly. Lord, I thank you that this is happening I don't see or understand it, but you said it, and I believe it, and it's happening. And did you know that against every odd imaginable, believe me, it ended up happening? Not because of anything I did or didn't do. God did it, but he just simply needed me to believe him for it. And how many knows that God can't lie? If God said it, he's going to do it. The only thing that can hinder is when people are in doubt, fear, and unbelief. but calling those things that are not as though they are. So the way that would work is, is you pray about the finances you need, and look, you've got the substance of faith in your hand. And so you've got a hold of the faith, and so you, you start calling things that are not as though they were. Lord, I thank you that these finances that I need are coming in. I thank you that provision is opening up. And quote scriptures, speak faith, believe God. And it doesn't just have to be about finances. There was a wonderful man whose son has gone on into, to be in the ministry. But there was a time, and he's been used really powerfully of God, actually. He's seen a lot of people saved, powerful ministry. But there was a time that his son was living in sin and was totally backslid, totally away from God. And every day when he prayed, 
he said this he said i would say out loud satan you cannot have my son i bind you in the name of jesus you will release him into what god has for him and i thank you lord that you're getting a hold of him and you're changing his life he's going to serve you he kept saying that every day for years and now his son's in the ministry that's faith that's faith that the devil has to back off and that's faith that god is faithful amen isn't that awesome so those of us that will live by faith and don't focus on your flaws but focus on god's faithfulness there's a story of a man that this minister who had great faith was willing to pray for him and the guy starts on and on about you know through the years i i've made so many mistakes I, i've done so many things i don't deserve anything and the minister finally kind of got fed up of hearing all that and said look if you confess your sin he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you from all unrighteousness let's not focus on that anymore let's get your eyes off of you and all the things you think are wrong with you and let's get our eyes on jesus and his faithfulness and he told him he said now what you're doing can hinder you from being healed because you're focused on yourself like in a negative way like i'm not going to be because i don't deserve it he said you need to quit doing that he said the bible says if you'll confess and turn from it god will forgive you and so he got him kind of past that hurdle and then the man was able to believe it did you know he was healed and let me say one more thing god will use people sometimes that you wouldn't expect there was a, a story i feel led to tell this story i'm gonna tell it there was a man okay there was this lady an older lady a white lady and she was a racist okay she had a, she didn't like black people at all and so this pastor what they had called because she was in the hospital dying i mean those when you're dying you're desperate and he couldn't go anyway because he was somewhere else but he sent an associate of his who happened to be a black man and he probably did on purpose this is a true story by the way and the guy goes in there to pray for her and he's got his little anointing oil he comes in he's ready to go and she gets in and says nope i don't want prayer from you and so she ends up getting a hold of the pastor and is complaining why don't you come pray for me he said i can't i'm doing other things i'll send him back and she just didn't want it but she got so desperate because she was dying i think the pastor might have said something like this look he's either going to come pray for you or you're going to die so you know have it your way and she said okay fine have him come pray and did you know god healed her in god's grace and mercy but god will use people sometimes that you don't expect god to use we have to be humble because i had a, a wonderful minister that had been in the ministry literally he had been in the ministry going to happen all right so this man had been in ministry for like 50 years and he was telling me back early so how many saw that movie the jesus revolution so you remember lonnie was like this uh hippie right well this guy was in a meeting with him. it didn't even know who he was didn't care he was in the meeting and this this hippie and he said that he had had these sandals and he the way he dressed and long hair he said he just didn't care for him and the guy comes and sits by him he was telling me this story firsthand this is what happened to him and he said he had a bad attitude because he was thinking to himself why didn't this guy get a shower cut his hair you know he's at church doesn't he understand he ought to dress all nice you know but the guy sitting there, and then the guy's the nerve put his hand on his shoulder so here's the hand and he's thinking man this guy well whenever because he doesn't know he's there as a minister he thinks he's just an annoying homeless guy that wandered in off the street and so he's put out by the guy now listen this isn't a minister that's telling me this it's kind of funny and so as the service was going the guy gets up and says well i'm gonna have brother so-and-so come and give the word the hippie went up and the guy could not believe it he's like i thought the guy was just some homeless guy that wandered in wanting some money or food or something he now he's up here preaching he said that as the guy was preaching toward the end of it he starts calling people up and he said man he said i saw people get hit by the power i mean people getting healed people get thrown back under the power and he said i could not believe 
that this long-haired hippie guy was operating in the power of God like that. Because this was a long time ago, back when, you know, you dressed in a suit to go to church, right? And so he said, I humbled myself and thought, I want what he has. And he went down and got prayer. And he said the power of God hit him. But look, God will use people that you don't expect. We have to be humble, okay? And let me finish and close out with this scripture, faith and praise. The Bible says that it's through faith and patience we inherit the promises of God. But while you're in the realm of faith and patience, we also need to be in faith and praise. How many knows when you know something is done in the spirit, you know God's heard you, you can start moving into praise? What God doesn't want us to do is to keep in this doubt, fear, and unbelief and and get kind of whiny or complainy or all this. And don't get me wrong. I've, been, I've prayed frustrated before. But God wants us to get out of that and into really believing him and then thanking and praising him that it's done. And just coming in and just praising him. Lord, I don't see it yet, but I will. But I thank you and I praise you that it's done, that you are faithful to your word to watch over it and to perform it. And nothing can stop you. The enemy can't stop you. If you said it, you're doing it. And I thank you for your faithfulness. I'll tell you, that type of praise will begin to really shift things. So what I mainly wanted to focus on tonight was believing you receive something now and then even though you don't see or feel any different, you stay in faith. That's where the rubber meets the road, and that's where most people end up losing what God did because they take the plug out of the wall. And at some point in time, they start believing and saying, well, I guess God didn't do it, but maybe he will later. Maybe one day. That's not... How many have ever seen that where you put the carrot out there and you just keep grasping for the carrot and keep going and it just keeps eluding you? That's the type of mindset that can cause people to have unanswered prayers over a prolonged period of time. God wants us to get to a place where we expect it. And my wife and I have had to step out in faith sometimes where it was even kind of scary because we really needed God to come through. She knows what I'm talking about. Well, we were in trouble. And we had to step out in faith and believe God in spite of whatever was going on around us. And there would be a swirl of activity. And God is faithful. And so let, let's close with this story. So for about a six-week period, I remember this is another faith aspect. We always prayed and believed over safety for different, you know, travels or whatever. For a six-week period, my wife went, she was going back and forth to work, and it was a long drive. And the enemy was really trying to come after her, okay? Okay. She had one crazy story after the next where she could have seriously been injured, possibly killed, driving down that road. And I mean, they were crazy stories. People road raging, pulling a gun, things uh, blowing up next to her. Trust me when I tell you it was crazy stories that if I told you all the stories, you would think, dear Lord, it was not a coincidence. Something wanted to hurt her. But did you know in faith, no no disaster came near her her car never got damaged she never had a wreck she never ended up in the hospital she was protected all the way there all the way back and she was safe how many knows that that's faith faith that god would keep her and take her there and she'd pray in the spirit and and uh, sometimes she'd pull at one time she was driving and the holy spirit told her back off and she backed off from something and then there was this big collision that happened right in front of her isn't that something? But God was looking out for her and not one hair on her head got injured. Isn't that awesome? We serve a faithful God, amen? Lord, we thank you for what you're doing tonight. I thank you for faith. Lord, that faith would begin to develop in us like never before, that we would come into a place of great faith in our personal lives to believe you for whatever it is, because this works in every realm. If we have lost loved ones, if we have wayward children, if we have financial needs, if we desperately need another job, if we need healing, if we need inner healing, if we need our relationships fixed, whatever it is that we need in life, Faith is the key that will unlock the will of God. 
And so, Lord, I thank you. Help us to learn the principles, to lay hold of the promises of God, to lay hold of the word of God in faith and believe it through to the end. Help us, Lord. We need faith in these last days. Jesus even said about the persistent widow, when the Son of Man comes, he'll find faith on the earth. Faith. That's what he put the focus on. That persistent widow would not give up until she got it. And he said, when the Son of Man comes, I will find faith on the earth. Lord, help us to have that kind of faith that moves mountains and is stubborn until we see everything happen that's supposed to happen. But we thank you for it. Let this time be sealed and everything accomplished in through it that you will to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.